good morning, uh, honorable members and uh, members of staff, our excellent support team. Uh, I hope you are well. Uh, I suggest we start the meeting. Um, I can't hear you, uh, uh, Chief Whip. I see you are speaking. Uh, you have to unmute. Yes, I'm greeting you, uh, Deputy Speaker, and all members, and I agree with you that let's start. The time is 8.30 on the dot. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, honorable members, let's begin with an... Um, an indication of the, there's the draft agenda. Um, uh, any apologies that we have to note? Uh, Acting Speaker, good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning. What do you call me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just follow, I'm just following the rules, uh, Acting Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want to apologize uh, from um, uh, Dr. Kornoff. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. If there's no other apology, let's proceed to consider the agenda. Any proposal for us to accept it? Uh, Doris, Honorable... Uh, proposes, Chair. Okay, Honorable Doris. I I second, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, and good morning to you too, and Honourable Sheikh. Uh, now that the agenda is agreed to, let's go to the minutes. My hand is up, Chair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, uh, Chief Whip, let's hear. Yes, Chair, uh, Honourable uh, uh, Acting uh, Speaker of the National Assembly, yeah. uh, I want to check if... Uh, <laughs> item on election of speaker is going to uh, appear on other um, uh, 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 agenda items uh, because it is not itemized at the moment. Okay, here. all right. Does that. No, it, it's a matter arising, ma'am. Uh, I told you before the other week that you've, uh, what's the word, um, you've dropped Abandoned. the ball. Yes, you've <laughs> dropped the ball on matters arising anymore, but but that's fine. It is on the matters arising, so we'll take it up there. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Chief Whip. Uh, Honorable members, so the the uh, we're now going into minutes. Let's go through them. Page one. Uh, page two. Uh, page three. Uh, page four, page five, uh, page six, page seven. Page eight. Okay. Uh, uh, I see uh, Honorable Majordina's hand is up. It's a, thank you, uh, Acting Speaker. Acting Speaker, I wanted to move for adoption of these minutes as a true reflection of okay, our previous thanks. meeting. Thank you very much. Any seconder? Deputy Speaker, it's Tasha. My hand is also up and I'd like to second. Thank you very much, Tasha. Uh, appreciate that. Both of you, the Chief Whip and yourself, uh, thank you very much. And uh, you may lower your hands. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the next item, which is matters arising. And Dr. Kraso, can you take us through matters arising? <laughs> Nature doesn't allow for a virtue. I see. I yeah, okay. All right, uh, let's see, uh, there's uh, uh, Honorable Majordina, Honorable uh, Tasha, uh, Mazzoni, uh, matters arising. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker, Acting Speaker. Uh, on page two, on the matter uh, of uh, Honorable Shivambo, I think uh, if uh, there is a progress report on, on that matter, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll request uh, the presiding officers to give us a progress report on the matter. The next matter is on page three, the other committee on section 25, uh, which might not uh, uh, meet the deadline of the first of August. That's the second matter. Um, the, those are the two matters. The third matter, we, we will request the, the, the chair of chairs, Honorable Frolic, just to verify uh, for us how many portfolio committees have undertaken the oversight uh, 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 visits to KZN. In, in, in the last meeting, it was eight. Uh, it may happen that there are more than eight so that you can be able to prepare properly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Honorable uh, Mazzoni. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Acting Speaker. Um, Acting Speaker, I've had reports that are quite disturbing from the members um, on of the committee from the DA on the Police Portfolio Committee. Um, and they are desperately concerned with the way um, the meetings are being handled and the way um, in which the unrest in KZN is uh, still um, not being dealt with. And um, they are being given um, reasons that letters are being written to yourself as acting speaker and to Honourable Cedric Frolic, Chair of Chairs. So the, the matter um, now almost two weeks down the line um, has still been... Uh, you know, uh, would, as they say in rugby, kick to touch. And uh, I, I'm personally very concerned about it. And I think as Chief Whips, we should all be very concerned about it. And I was wondering if uh, you yourself had, in fact, received a letter or if the Chair of Chairs had received any such correspondence. Because if we do have a committee who is refusing to discuss a matter of national importance, um, then I think that this is the forum in which we need to ventilate and we need to discuss how we take this issue forward. Because last week we all agreed that um, this was a matter of national importance and would be placed um, as, a, as a matter of national importance. So I think we do need to find out what the facts are and um, why, uh, if, if it's in fact true, why certain portfolios aren't adhering to the, the role of um, listening to the head presiding officers being yourself and um, the chair of chairs. Thanks very much. Thank you, Honourable Singh. Uh, good morning, Acting Speaker and colleagues. Uh, no, I'm covered by the other two colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kaso, would you like to take the bite with, with some of the responses? Yes, thank, thank you, sir. Um, starting with the matter uh, relating to Honorable Shivambu, the uh, uh, correspondence of the member was indeed received, and the matter is receiving consideration. Um, the member has raised a few issues, quite a number of issues, in fact, that need um, proper consideration. So the office of the speaker is, is looking into the matter and at the appropriate time, a report will be given to this committee if necessary. Um, that's the first one. The issue of the police committee, I'm sure House Chairperson Frolic will respond to that. But in relation to section 25, Indeed, the term of that committee will have to be um, extended. And the reason is, is because of the public participation <laughs> that the committee has to, um, has to adhere to. For instance, the National House of Traditional Leaders um, will have until mid-September to make submissions. Um, so the term might have to be extended till end of September or till end of October. But that's what is, is happening at the moment. Um, so another matter, the issue of the Section 194 committee was raised in this meeting. That issue will be dealt with tomorrow by the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee is meeting tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry, uh, members, I omitted. In the manner in which the, the report on the matter of Honorable Shifambo I am sad to have indicated that that report had been received in the morning. Uh, it's incorrect. Uh, I, I, I had noted it and meant to raise it. I, it skipped my mind. 
because it should be said, reported to have been submitted that morning. I had no view or clue that it had indeed been done. So a more accurate uh, reflection is that it had been reported uh, as, as in the meeting that it had been submitted that morning. So uh, just that word will make a huge difference to the accuracy of the line. Thank you very much. Honorable members, is there any other uh, matter arising? If none, let's go to the next item. No, 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 no Chair. Deputy yes, Speaker. Yes. Uh, Honorable Frolik is supposed to respond on how oh, many committees. Yes, yes, yes. Honorable Frolik, uh, why is he keeping quiet? You know, people from <laughs> Kabeha mustn't worry me uh, because they come from my favorite city. Uh, Honorable uh, Frolik. No, good morning, Acting Speaker. Good morning, Honorable Members. I was just worried, Acting Speaker, that you don't recognize hands from Quebec. <laughs> now, now that I hear it's one of your favorite spots, I, I take it that it's just simply an oversight. Absolutely, you are right, yeah. <laughs> no, no, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, um, I need to report on two issues. The one is the updated list of committees that have uh, undertaken oversight in mm -hmm. KwaZulu Natal Gauteng. I'll send out the complete list to all the chief whoops immediately <laughs> after this meeting. There is basic education that has also gone to that province or provinces. So we will update and have all the relevant details um, in an email to all the chief whoops. Secondly, in terms of the Portfolio Committee on Police, yes, there's been an exchange of letters. I've received a number of letters from the chairperson and we responded accordingly. Um, I may inform, um, and thank you to the Honourable Mazzoni for raising this matter. I may inform the, the Chief Hoops Forum that yesterday I received a report. The, you mean the Programming Committee? The Programming Committee, my yes. apologies. Um, that the committee has now scheduled and the terms of reference to be considered by that committee next week. Uh, I think it's on the 10th. Um, yes, the 10th, the 17th, 17th, they will consider the terms of reference and a week thereafter on the 24th, they will start the inquiry. Um, there were some uncertainties that we had to deal with in terms of the rules that has been dealt with now, so there shouldn't be any difficulties now for that committee to proceed. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, thank you very much, General Members. Um, uh, members, is there any other comment on matters arising that we are skipping by mistake or otherwise? If not, let's go to Mr. Tau. He looks ready and raring to go. Go ahead, Nati. Uh, good morning, uh, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Members and Colleagues. Our presentation starts on slide number uh, three. On this slide, it is uh, the Apple Committee to Amend Section 25. Uh, can the some, has uh, already been uh, uh, touched on earlier. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I'm sorry to do this to you. When I raised the yes. matter of uh, election of a speaker, you said it's going to come as a matter arising. And that is also, what happened to you now? You should have, uh, we agreed that this is how this matter would be handled. My apologies, that it have. I'm alive. Uh, alive. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I realize, yeah, we suffer the consequences of your energetic morning. And that it also <laughs> too seems to be taking over uh, our Alzheimer's problems. Please don't do that, Honorable Castle. You're still a young man. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so, uh, uh, I will be guided by this meeting, but we had created a dedicated slot for this item yes. um, as, as item number seven. But if if it is a wish of this committee to present on it now, because it certainly did not arise from the minutes of last meeting. OK, OK, no, no, I made a mistake, but it's there on the agenda, Honorable. Uh, you don't seem to have looked at it, uh, <laughs> Honorable Majordina. Uh, it's item seven. Uh, no, 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 no. Thursday mornings can do that sometimes. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and that it out. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I was on slide number three to indicate yes. that the matter has already been touched on. Uh, nothing has changed so far. 
but the possibility of asking for the extension is there looking at the uh, time frames that the community is saving the next update is on slide number 10 on this slide it is the issue of doing business bill before pc on public service and administration the committee is planning to finalize the bill on the 18th of august after considering the motion of desirability and also uh, doing participation the next update is on slide number 22 on this slide it is the gas amendment bill before pc on mineral resources and energy the deadline for the submissions was on the 30th of july the committee is planning during the month of september public hearings consideration of motion of desirability deliberations and then on the 8th of october to finalize the report the next update is on slide number 33 on this slide, it is the update with regard to NHI processes, just to indicate how far the process is now. Uh, in terms of capturing and categorizing email submissions, uh, last week, 31,500 were already captured, and now the, committee, the team has captured 32,000 as on the 10th of August but there are still 65,000 accompanying emails to the main submissions. The team is busy analyzing that. And then out of the substantive submissions, the team is uh, busy with the analysis. Uh, out of the 214 or 200, out of 217, 14 has been uh, cut out categorized and the remaining 18 will be done so but it's very large submissions and then uh, lastly with regard to hard code the hard hand delivered submissions the team is currently busy uploading all the scanned uh, submissions uh, thank you the speaker this concludes our report okay let's go to the bills and then we'll take the discussion of both together Good morning, Honorable Acting Speaker, Honorable Members and Colleagues. On our report today, there are no changes on the list of bills before Parliament. There were, new in, there were no new introduction this week. So we still okay. have one bill on NA order paper and 37 bills on the NA committees. Mm -hmm. And we will report for information purposes that on slide number four, we are working on two bills certified to be in <coughs> which is the agricultural product standards and the public service laws general amendment bill okay. and on the next slide uh, we only have four bills with presidency for assent thank you honorable speak deputy speaker that's all from our report uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, honourable members. Let's go uh, to discuss both uh, committee and bills reports. Any comments, honourable Khanif? Uh, thank you very much, uh, honourable acting speaker. Uh, honourable acting speaker, as you know, it's Women's Month. You actually convened the men's parliament, so you're very uh, concerned about women's issues. Uh, in the Constitutional Court last week, the, uh, 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 the legal advisor of the President uh, raised the issue of the Muslim Marriages Bill and the court order in the High Court, in the Appeal Court, and now to be settled in the Constitutional Court that this Muslim Marriages Bill must be ready by November next year. Now, that doesn't mean we must wait till the last minute. I don't see any uh, reference to uh, this uh, 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 implementation of this court order and respect for the rule of law. So we like to have a progress report. Uh, there seems to be confusion who should uh, be responsible for the Muslim marriages bill, home affairs or the 
Department of Justice. The court order actually says Department of Justice, and when I engaged with the minister's spokesperson last week, he said, no, it's home of peace. So we need some clarity so that the portfolio committee responsible for this do not embarrass the president. Yeah. Um, uh, the... Um, uh, the people who... Uh, the legal section of parliament that reports on these matters will apprise us uh, as well uh, if they have any update on that matter. Okay, let's go to Honorable C. You have to unmute, Honorable C. No, no, no. That's fingers are a bit sticky this morning, I think, Speaker. <laughs> Thank you. <very laughs> okay. Much. Okay, I think okay. Speaker, just on the question of bills and, and, and things like that, you know, yesterday our portfolio committee of environment and forestry, etc., were on an oversight visit uh, to a company where there was a huge fire and, <clears throat> and chemicals, etc., and health impacts. But that company, in, in their presentation, which I've got with me here, says all UPL products are registered in South Africa under Act Number 36 of 1947. Now, I don't know if that act has been amended since or whether that is the act. We're still looking at an act of 1947. Uh, and, and, and I hope that our bills department or somebody legal department would look at all these pieces of legislation that we are applying today, uh, 50 or, six or 70 years after they were passed by a, a government that uh, we did not subscribe to. So I, I just picked this up yesterday and I thought I should bring it to the attention of this committee. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comment? Honorable Majordina? The, the Mr. Speaker, my hand is up. Anything, Speaker? Okay. All right. Honorable, thank you. Um, Kalib? We are Pila. We are acting, Speaker. Kakulu. Kakulu. Don't bore Okay. I just want to... Um, a check on the issue that we raised here, and also Uba Butao has touched on it, the issue of NHI, acting speaker. Yeah. If you yeah. listen to the report of Uba Butao, as uh, Honorable Frolik was also indicated last week, yeah. he said, we yeah. are still talking about capturing of data. And Uba Butao yeah. is saying that some situations need to be gone through. The issue of capacity, uh, acting speaker, because last week we raised this matter, and then we promised that we are going to get a feedback in terms of the capacity to deal with this matter. And if we book on a deadline date, according to the report, I don't think that we are going to uh, meet that deadline date with these um, volumes of emails that the, the committee section needs to go through. Can we be updated okay. in terms of the capacity, uh, Honorable Acting Speaker? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Honorable Machotina. Acting speaker, my hand have been up. It's Natasha Nkangu. Oh, okay, Natasha. Let's give you first before the uh, 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 chief whip. Yes, go ahead, man. All right, thank you uh, very much, acting speaker. Uh, speaker, uh, my uh, my point is on the the point that Honorable Singh have raised. I think this is a point that we have been raising as the EFF quite often in, on this platform and other several other platforms. And I know we have received a report at some point in, in this committee on the old apartheid bills and X that are still uh, uh, rooming around and, 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 and um, that are still um, in action in, in, a, in a current democratic uh, uh, state. So um, I think uh, Mr. Tazo did, at some point, they did um, um, give us a document. And I think it's all, the onus is on us, Honorable Singh, as members of parliament, to ensure that we revise these old apartheid acts that some of our members, like the commander in chief, are in court because of an old apartheid act that serve no purpose for the current democratic state. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable, I'll come back to this point. Honorable Majordina. 
Thank you very much, uh, acting speaker. Acting speaker, on the on the on the old um, uh, bills uh, that must be repealed. Yes, we did receive the list. I want to second uh, the two speakers to say, let the list be referred to relevant committees so that relevant committees can be can start now and. Uh, before the end of this year, if possible, we must schedule, uh, even if it's a week, to deal with all those bills that must be repealed, the, the old bills. The second one, I did not capture uh, Honorable Hendricks well when he was referring to the men's parliament. As far as I know, uh, we have agreed that the sectoral parliament must sit by, by, by annual. And in 2020, there was a men's parliament. So I, I don't know how does he link uh, the men's parliament with the court ruling. Not unless he can clarify that. But there was a men's parliament. And this year, it's women's parliament, not a men's parliament. Thank you. Um, any other comment? I've raised no. my hand the person. Sorry. Okay, Honorable Milda, sorry, I didn't see that. Go ahead, Ndat. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Now, on the same issue about the bills from the past, um, we must just be technically correct. I think the bill that Mr. Singh referred to was 1947. The National Party came to power in 1948 with a policy of apartheid. So this is even pre-apartheid. You must just make sure that our facts. <laughs> if we go back to withdraw, uh, in terms of old bills, we should also look at the Union Act of 1910 that says South Africa is one country with a colonial boundary. But just in light of white chairperson, uh, just remember that the Magna Carta of 1250, of 1250, yes still in use yes. United Kingdom quite effectively. So we should look at the contents of bills and not at the date. Yeah. Um, no, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, uh, ah. Honorable, Honorable um, Murder has stolen my thunder. You done, sir. Okay, all right. Has stolen my thunder. Uh, I would like to request Honorable Tasso to provide to all the chief whips a comment by the then Minister of Justice on this matter because it remains relevant how government overall has handled this question uh, that uh, the uh, uh, even when repeals are done uh, sections of those bills are retained because they remain uh, appropriate wherever they are timing so content is critical and so on so that report at least clarifies this matter uh, in a way that uh, you will notice it will make sense. And uh, secondly, so please do circulate that, uh, 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 Honorable Dante Kaso, uh, do that for us. And uh, on the uh, Muslim marriages, uh, and Dante uh, Hanif, do you want to clarify what you were meant, what you were meaning? I'm just giving you an opportunity to say what you are saying briefly. Hanif, can you speak to me? What can I do? Unmute. Thank you, uh, honorable uh, acting uh, speaker. You can't put all those sunglasses in the morning. Acting speaker. As you, as you know, that the president has been under fire for in quite a few cases uh, that uh, uh, Muslim marriages uh, are not uh, recognized and that women, Muslim wives, suffer indignity from the cradle to the grave yeah. because their death certificate will say never married. Uh, so the matter then uh, uh, is now in the Constitutional Court. We are waiting for the Constitutional Court to confirm uh, that uh, the uh, Marriage Act and the Divorce Act is unconstitutional. But there is a, a, a court order from the uh, Supreme Court of Appeal that a Muslim Marriages Act must be in place in two years' time, and that two years expires in November next year. And then there's a further requirement that the Department of Justice needs to look at regulation in 18 months' time, which is six months before that, uh, with regard to the propriety rights when there's a dissolution of a Muslim marriage. So I contacted the spokesperson, and we had a Zoom meeting uh, for <coughs> And he indicated that uh, uh, it is largely the responsibility of the Department of Home Affairs, uh, while the court order 
mentioned Department of Justice. Okay. Uh, okay. So no, this. I yeah. think both of them are not no, that, speaking about this yeah. uh, court order. Yeah, okay. No, honorable members, let me remind you that the, uh, we had a discussion in the programming committee. There is, in fact, a report with recommendations on constitutional deadlines and what we should do in between. We expressly agree that uh, each committee of parliament who this matter uh, relates to, for example, should uh, provide deadlines that if after six months there's no movement, the committee must take over because legislation is parliament's job anyway so that we meet the deadline so what i'm going to suggest uh, uh, chair of chairs i'm going to request that you you speak to the uh, committee the both committees of justice and home affairs to jointly uh, uh, what's the word confer on this matter and give us a, a, a briefing uh, so that at the next earliest opportunity, we must be briefed on this matter. It has been on the agenda. In fact, when we passed uh, legislation earlier on, we couldn't on this matter for some reason or another. So it's critical that we request them to jointly meet uh, this month uh, so that we are provided with an indication of what the status is and how quickly we can move in that direction. There shouldn't be any delays anymore. We don't have to wait until next year, November. If it can be done yesterday, let it be done. So that's my request, and let's proceed on that understanding. Um, honorable members, uh, is there any other comment on these matters uh, so, that uh, from the bills and the committee? Uh, yeah. that, uh, uh, Mr. Yes, I'm going to recognize Ms. Beck to speak on the issue of the NHI. Because we've been okay. into the matter, Mr. Okay. okay, all right. Go Good ahead. Uh, uh, yes. Good Thank you. Good morning, Acting Speaker, Honourable Members and colleagues. Just on the resourcing of the NHI, uh, we have since July had additional resources assigned by the approval of the Acting Secretary to Parliament. So we have four um, staff members who were previously from the EPMO office who's been appointed to assist with this project. Um, in addition, we've assigned a number of resources, particularly... Uh, Ms. Beck, Ms. Beck mm -hmm. don't use uh, EPMO. What on earth is that? Say it out clearly what it is, unless you don't know. Please, it's important not to use those abbreviations when people are going to be asking what was that she was talking about. Yeah, please. Um, apologies, Deputy Speaker. It's from the, yeah. the previous project office that we've assigned four staff members to <coughs> project manage the NHI submissions process. We have since the extended constituency period um, assigned staff members who were not necessarily um, occupied with work, particularly from library research. And then we have also assigned additional content support to assist with the analysis of the um, submissions. So we are tracking the progress on a weekly basis and keeping the committee updated. For now, the um, deadline for October is still achievable. So there is a team that is working consistently and has been working consistently um, particularly during the constituency period to make sure that we achieve the deadline. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much. I see uh, Natasha, your hand is up. Uh, thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Sorry, Madam Deputy Speaker, I forgot about a very important issue earlier on. Mm. Um, I see uh, Mr. Tau have reported on the committee, but there's no report stating to the NYDA. And I think that process um, have been brought to this committee before. Um, um, and I know the committee have completed its work. So we need to get a report as well on the NYDA. Are we, is it going to be programmed on the programming um, for this term or, or, or what, Deputy Speaker? I don't know where to place that issue. Okay. Uh, I heard uh, uh, some feedback the other day. But let's hear Daddy uh, Kaso. Can you just let us know on the process of uh, the, uh, just uh, correct me that uh, uh, 17 names have been submitted, uh, 80 seat, and the matter has been sent to the president uh, to select from the uh, 17 names. And uh, so the next steps, uh, we must hear what they are. Uh, Dr. Klaso? So I'm going to recognize uh, just Advocate Tao. If he has a... Okay, yeah. Yes, um, I don't admit it. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. That it down. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Members and Colleagues. Uh, yeah, on slide number four, we have indicated uh, that uh, NYDA process is one of those processes that has been finalized on the 15th of July. So from committee side, the work has been completed and then the, the report has been on ATC. And, and, and the, the staff has been sent to the president. So, uh, I think what's I the story that. about that? Yes, that's why I wanted you to confirm. Yeah, yes. go ahead. That it would have to go through the house, uh, Deputy Speaker. First, uh, seeing that we are will now be sitting, so the report would have to be scheduled for consideration by the house before. Oh, it oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, and uh, why has it not been scheduled so far? Um, because we're in recess, uh, um, so there were no seatings. We so it, it will be it will be scheduled as soon as we the house is able to sit. Okay, all right. <laughs> I nearly said, hey, I don't know what recess you're talking about, but uh, let's uh, let's leave that before the chief whips hit the roof the roofs. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, we we need a year, chief whip. Not uh, two months or something like that. <laughs> okay, uh, that uh, matter will be dealt with that way uh, in the next week or two. Uh, that's the, the time frame within which we'll be uh, active and so on. Honorable members, let's go to programming. Is it still you in that day, uh, class? No, so it will be the deputy chief will. Okay, my <laughs> oh, uh, okay. speaker. Okay, yes. Uh, so uh, before we go to programming, Yes. We, the agenda indicates that we must deal with the process. Oh, yeah, the election of the speaker. Yes. yes. You, you yes. did not want this item. <laughs> Is it because you want to prolong your acting? Uh, 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 Why not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead in that class. Thank okay. you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have circulated this document to honorable members. Uh, the introduction basically deals with the section in the constitution that <coughs> the election of the speaker and part A of schedule three, as well as the rules um, of the chief justice. Um, also that the NA rules make provision for an acting speaker in circumstances like the present one. Um, the applicable rules, section 52, uh, of the constitution says at the first sitting after its election or when necessary to fill a vacancy, the NA must elect a speaker or deputy speaker as the case may be. The chief justice must preside over the election of the speaker or designate another judge to do so. And as indicated, schedule three applies to the election of the speaker. Rule 14, um, at its first sitting after its election, election, the NA must, in accordance with Section 5.2, elect the Speaker. Of course, that does not apply in this instance, but Rule 21 states, whenever it is necessary to elect a Speaker, the Secretary or an Officer of Parliament nominated by him or her must inform the NA accordingly, whereupon the House must immediately or at a time announced by the Secretary or such Officer proceed to the election in terms of Section 52 of the Constitution. Now, the rules define the secretary to be the secretary um, uh, of parliament. The chief justice, again, as I indicated, presides over this election. Um, rule 24 deals with the issue of the deputy speaker acting. We'll come to com we'll go to comments now. Um, I think the point to mention here is that um, where there is one more than one nomination, the, the constitution prescribes that there must be the voting must be by secret ballot. Um, and therefore, for that reason, we are busy with preparations as if there's going to be one nomination um, for a secret ballot. And number two, the point in number two is important, that a secret ballot procedure by its nature will require physical attendance of members in order to cast their votes as prescribed in the election rules. And, and of course, this will necessitate measures to ensure that all COVID protocols are strictly adhered to, in particular, social distancing. We go to paragraph E. 
at this point, the acting secretary of the parliament has informed the, the office of the chief justice of the vacancy in the office of the speaker. And uh, we have indicated that a date will be communicated as soon as this committee um, has agreed on a date as well as the time. Um, point three, um, the, the rules have indicated the rules already that have to be done uh, by the Chief Justice. And point number four, um, once that date has been confirmed, a formal notice will be sent to all the members. It will also be published in the ATC. And uh, we will request parties to inform us of members will be able to come to Parliament because we are quite alive to the fact that uh, not all members may be able to attend. Because there has to be physical attendance by members, um, we are then putting it that the National Assembly Chamber should be the primary venue for the casting of the votes. And the reason is simple. The chair must uh, monitor the voting process. In this instance, the chair will be the, the chief justice or acting chief justice, or a judge designated by the chief just, acting chief justice. Uh, for that reason, it is, it, the practical arrangement can only be that there must be one venue um, for the casting of the ballot. Um, we have looked at uh, possible venues. One, the NA chamber can accommodate up to 167 members, um, and that allows for adequate social distancing. We, have, we are also proposing that we use the public gallery. The public gallery can accommodate up to 127 members with social distancing observed. Um, that we also use room E249, um, which can accommodate 92 members. We will also use the officials bay in the NA chamber, which can accommodate uh, up to 24 members. That all in all gives us a sitting capacity of 400, 400 seats, 408 seats. Um, and of course, we don't expect that we will even reach 400 members. Um, now, between the chamber and E249, there will be a video connection. We have not uh, proposed old assembled chamber instead of the gallery because there would be uh, connectivity issues there. That chamber is not connected to the main chamber in terms of video connection. Members will be seated in each venue based, of course, on the names given by the members, by the, by the parties. And within the allocation, there will be, for instance, there are 167 in the chamber, any chamber. Those names will be in alphabetical uh, order. We had proposed, we were going to propose that if necessary, allowance be made for political party leadership to be seated in the chamber, but that, we'll leave that to, to the parties to decide themselves in terms of their allocation. Members will be called from the voters' roll in batches of 10 to come forward to obtain the ballot paper, their names ticked off, and they cast their votes. And members from the gallery and 8249 will be ushered in their groups of 10 uh, to be on standby and seated on the benches outside the chamber until the next 10 names are called. Once they cast their votes, they will then go back uh, to the uh, uh, identified venues. And once members, as I indicated, have cast their votes, they will be shut, ushered back. The process will follow until uh, all the members have been able to cast their votes. The next page, please. Page number four, please. All right. There will be three voting booths on the floor of the chamber. Um, and the floor will be cl uh, clearly marked for purposes of social distancing. And I think it's important to, to mention this point, one of the members, that the ballot paper can only be printed once nominations are made. Hence, there will be a delay. Um, for now, we're working on 45 minutes. Um, previously, there were some technical challenges, and we are trying to overcome those challenges. Um, so you could, with the, with the printing of the ballot papers, and the, the voting process and the counting of of the of the votes, I think you're looking just over two hours um, 
for that. I'll, I'll check the specific times that we, we took previously. And the last point is that uh, at every stage of the process, necessary hygiene and social distancing protocols will be followed in each venue, including the wiping of the badges outside the NA chamber as members move and the next group comes in. And we want to emphasize that our arrangements are being made on the basis that members will be in parliament physically. And lastly, honorable members, as indicated in the draft program, we are proposing Thursday, the 19th of August, um, for this process. And the reason is that we want to allow for, for adequate preparation, but also for members to be able to travel, because I understand that there are only two airlines that um, are operating at the moment, uh, so that you, you create adequate uh, space for members to come to Parliament next week. Thursday. Deputy Speaker, that is the presentation um, for now. Thank you, sir. You are muted, uh, Chair. Uh, honorable members, do you feel ready? Any comment on the preparations? I see Natasha, I see Stephen Swart, I see Hanif, and uh, who else? Uh, the Chief Whip, yeah. In that order, please go ahead. Naren Singh for will follow the chief whip. And me too, acting the okay. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I speak? Yes, oh, okay, thank you, sir. Um, no, I think, um I want to agree on, on the point, uh, <clears throat> Deputy Speaker, that we must use also the public gallery so that we um, can get uh, more members in and adhere to social distancing as the program um, and uh, the, the report stands as Mr. Caso has presented it. I think um, they are on the right track um, on, on, on ensuring all members' safety and ensure that we do have a new uh, speaker by the end of next Friday so that you are done with your acting. Possibly it can be your speaker. We don't know the nomination. <laughs> 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 thank you, thank you, speak. Thank you very much, uh, Natasha. Uh, next, I I cited your names in some order. Uh, is that you, Hanif? Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, honourable uh, deputy, uh, honourable acting speaker. Um, I just want to know that if there is only one nomination. Will they be still be necessary for voting and all these elaborate arrangements? Okay. Um, next, Honorable Swart. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Morning, colleagues. And thank you very much, Mr. Castle, for the hard work in the preparation mm -hmm. for um, these issues. I just wanted to support um, his proposal that we do allow for the whips and the party leader. Um, or to be in the National Assembly, um, if we can, because the proposal is that it must be alphabetical, but with that caveat or condition that we allow party leader and a number of whips or, um, to be in the National Assembly just to ensure the process is smooth. And then I just wanted clarity as to whether it will be purely an election process or will there be an opportunity for declaration or any other um, in that regard. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Steve Swart, what do you want to declare when you have to elect? Really? No, 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 no. I will refuse that if I still have authority. <laughs> On the day. Okay. No, no. Depends okay, let's nominated. Proceed. It depends <laughs> uh, Who's next? Um, thank you. Eh? Thank you. Eh? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, acting speaker. Uh, thanks for the proposal. I think it's very clear and it's understandable. Thanks to Babu Kasu. Uh, just a, a quick one, Deputy Speaker, Acting Speaker. <clears throat> uh, Babu Kasu just mentioned that uh, the elections of the Speaker will take place on the 19th of August, which is next week. 
Um, I just want to understand what time, because if there will be more than one name or candidate, the process that has been explained here is very long. So I will also suggest that if we can meet in the morning instead of two o'clock, that is the first one. The document that Babu Kaso has just presented here, Rule 21, uh, the Secretary of Parliament, we don't have a Secretary of Parliament, Deputy Speaker. Can we be updated in that regard as well? And also the Acting Secretary to Parliament, which is the Deputy Secretary to Parliament, can we be updated with their contracts? Because all what we have is acting. We are acting, she's acting. This is not Hollywood. So we need to know what is I knew Tlekiwe wouldn't miss that. <laughs> okay, all right, let's 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 get who else must still talk? Honorable uh, Chief Whip. Thank you very much, uh, Acting uh, Speaker. Uh, I also welcome uh, the report uh, on the election uh, process for the Speaker and support uh, what has been said and the entire content of this report. Um, in, in, in supporting um, Honorable Swart, uh, if a leader of a party, um, uh, uh, say name starts with Z, then we have, will have to be flexible in that whilst we agree that we're going to follow uh, at the least alphabetically, but uh, there will be some flexibility in terms of uh, allowing uh, whips and, uh, and, and the leaders of parties to be inside. A pity that um, the rules uh, on what uh, Honourable uh, 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 Henderson raised earlier on, it's a pity that the rules don't allow us as parties to declare in advance to say we are forwarding a candidate was if it was uh, 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 there was there was provision for that we are not going to 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 go to uh, calling all members to come physically so it is it's, it is a pity that we'll only know on the day uh, when, 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 whether it's one or two or three or five uh, 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 candidates. Um, it, uh, uh, the date of the 19th supported Thursday is, is caucus time. I think uh, 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 the, the proposal to start at two o'clock was trying to respect that the Thursdays are caucus dates. Uh, so, but if the programming committee so wish to make some changes, uh, I don't have a problem on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Singh. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Speaker from Hollywood to Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, uh, acting Speaker, no one, <coughs> one appreciates the fact that we have to elect the Speaker sooner rather than later. Uh, but, you know, in all of this, I'm seeing whether all COVID protocols are being adhered to. <coughs> Excuse me, not only be on site, but actually flying in and flying out. And has consideration been made for people with comorbidities? because everybody has a right, every member has a right to participate in that election. And one would have thought that we could think a little outside of the box as well as an option, I don't know if it is an option, to decentralize the process. <coughs> It'll save a lot of money if you have uh, uh, members of parliament from Durban meeting in Durban, from the KZN region, some meeting in Johannesburg, etc. Will that not work? It could still be secret. It could still be transmitted. Uh, you know, we are, I've participated in international conferences recently with secret ballot, and we've been able to vote secretly. <coughs> Excuse me. And then even with the JSC, uh, Judicial Services Commission, we've been able to submit our secret ballots virtually uh, to certain individuals. So, so thinking as well, you know, I have a full consideration for the parliament to be there, given that the COVID figures are increasing, particularly in the Western Cape. So I'm just leaving the question before. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, uh, Honorable Sig, uh, you must do it into your elbow so that you comply with the uh, uh, way of doing. Don't do it in your hand, including at its back. So generally, yeah, that's what right. compliance yeah, you right. need. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Nobody all right. Else. All right. All right. Even if you're in your house, you must still do it into your elbow. So yeah. Okay. Honorable Sheikh Imam. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Acting Speaker. Acting Speaker, if you can be willing to share your salary with us, we can delay this entire process. So you act. You can act for a longer period of time. Um, <laughs> But having said that, uh, Acting Speaker, I want to concur with what Honorable Singh is saying. You know, yesterday alone, 127 deaths in the city of Cape Town, of Western Cape alone. The infection rate in the Western Cape is very high. Shouldn't we have also considered some other, through secret ballot, but on a virtual platform, as Honorable Singh is actually uh, yeah. uh, uh, expressing? Because... You're talking about 167. We're also talking about putting people in the gallery, which means you are going to exceed the 50 that you are supposed to have inside. Uh, it clearly does pose a, a, a serious risk. But secondly, I wanted to. Uh, secondly, I think I'm 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 answered as far as the issue of nominations by the chief whip, who said that of course nominations can come from the floor on the day of this particular election. But if that was not the case, and if you had made provisions, then we might not have had to go through this entire process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are we done now uh, with the uh, comments? Okay. It's uh, uh, Tasha, Chief Whip. acting speaker. Oh, okay. Tasha and then uh, uh, Chief Whip uh, uh, of the majority. Acting Speaker, I must say, considering how often we call you speak in the house, it's become almost second nature. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a relief having you not tell us that you're not the speaker at the moment. <laughs> um, but, but, but all jokes aside, uh, Deputy Speaker, this is this is a, a not Deputy Speaker, Acting Speaker. Let me get it right because for this for yeah. this while you are the Acting Speaker. And you deserve that title. Um, this is an <coughs> occasion, and um, I, I do think that we have to realise a few things. Workplaces, the the number fifty in an indoor area d does not count, so so that is irrelevant when it comes to Parliament because Parliament is considered a place of work. There are, of course, um, members that have serious comorbidities, and I think. If one if one thinks of the way we've handled things in the past, I know that me and uh, um, the Honourable Majordina have been uh, very careful in making sure that our members that have very serious comorbidities, and I just use us as an example because we have larger caucuses, um, have been kept safe um, at home and in the arena. And I think that we could arrange that those who simply cannot be uh, on flight, who may themselves be suffering from COVID or have some kind of COVID uh, um, symptom, do not get on an aeroplane. Because what we want to do is we want to be the example to, to the public. But equally so, we need to be the example to the public that life is going to carry on. We, we now know that COVID is with us for a very long time. I'm sure many of us have been vexed. I've never been happier to be 42 years old in my life. I thought I wouldn't like getting older. I'm loving it because I was able to get my vaccine and I was certainly one of the first in line. Um, and uh, I think many of us have, have received our, our vaccine and almost uh, our second vaccine. So I think we need to show the public, A, that, that we can do this, and B, it instills um, a sense of relief and a sense of um, uh, pride in our, in our country when the MPs return to do their jobs and, and to do their jobs carefully. I think an interesting point is raised uh, about um, an adjustment that needs to be done in the rules. And I think that we should bring it to the Rules Committee because we always say we legislate for the future. So let's change the rules and let's legislate for the future that we are able to nominate before the time. And then we would save people like Mr. Castle and all our staff a lot of work um, by not having to print the ballot papers on the day. And uh, I think that that is something that we can certainly take up in the in, in future rules committee meetings. And just to end, Acting Speaker. I'd like to say Mr. Castle and his team have done an amazing job from start to finish to keep us safe. And I have no doubt in my mind that their number one priority 
is to keep us safe. And you can see the way they behave in Parliament, the way they move us around the buildings, they do everything possible to keep us safe. So I think that if we ask this one last call of them, just to, to make some arrangement, because I think it will be a very small amount who would not want to be or who, who could not be in the House for this momentous occasion, are given the opportunity to, to vote on a very secure platform. Um, we, we, should, we should really look at that, because I know I have a few members that aren't well, and, and they should certainly be part of this be part of this platform and then ju sorry just the very last thing acting speaker i do think that the chief whips should be in the house because we do um we regulate things from a central area and we talk to each other within the house and i'm just thinking honorable majordina and i would be okay because we both ma so we would land up in the same venue but then someone like honorable swat and honorable singh would be in a completely different venue because they're far away so the m's would be together but anyone else would be far away from us and i think that that would be difficult should we have to confer uh, with one another so let's just keep that in mind thank you so much acting speaker thank you very much honorable uh, chief whip Thank you very much, uh, Acting Speaker. I've, uh, I've, I've been covered uh, by a lot of speakers. Um, indeed, uh, Parliament uh, is not uh, restricted to 50. This is a workplace. And um, even before uh, uh, we went for constituency, we were a, a workplace, so the 50 does not uh, apply on us as Parliament. Uh, Chair, um, on the issue of uh, members with comorbidities, I think uh, we as, a, as, as, as chief groups of parties we must um, uh, 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 compile the list of saying how many of our members. But um, we are uh, 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 having consulted with um, Mr. Chasso and the team, it, it was going to be a nightmare uh, 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 to have um, uh, 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 a secret ballot for everyone. And on a cost, on, 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 on the virtual platform. And uh, this matter is a constitutional matter that says the parliament is sitting if it is for when the 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 the, 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 the term is starting but the, even now it says secret ballot and uh, on those uh, platforms uh, so far they not allowing us to be able to do that secret ballot but also to decentralize to decentralize to nine provinces so let's let's try and do it once and do it quickly um, I want to fully uh, 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 support that um, in the tomorrow's um, uh, uh, rules committee. Let's check if we cannot um, have a provision that allows um, uh, parties uh, to make declaration in terms of whether they are, they are putting the candidate or not, so that uh, we can um, uh, uh, take care of what um, Honorable and 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 Jaguino was saying that it might take time for ballot papers to be presented on the same day. So uh, the rules is sitting tomorrow. So we can propose that uh, 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 in the rules meeting. And uh, I think I, I, I think I'm, I'm I'm covered uh, on most uh, on, on, on many issues. Thank you. Okay. All right. Can you speak on my much. Been up for long? I will say, do you want to come back? My hand has been uh, up. Thanks, uh, I'm, I'm not being chosen. I don't know why. Uh, 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 Honourable uh, Papu, uh, like Honourable Sengdue has done and others have done on the platform, if you notice that I'm not noticing you, you speak. That's all it requires. <laughs> but shouting on really? the platform. So not good. No, you are not shouting, honorable member. It's because we are human. We don't always see your hands on the platforms that we are using here. Okay. So it's important to draw our attention like you. all the other members do. Please, honorable member, let's not debate it. You are given a chance oh, to speak talk. now. Talk. Sorry, uh, Chair. I, uh, but, I but, but speaker, uh, uh, honorable, speaker, on, honorable, I'm to be, to, to be bullied by an, a fellow member who's not chairing the no, meeting. No, no, no. Honourable members should not even get into these things in the first place. This matter is closed, honourable members. Uh, you will speak and honourable Sheikh will speak after you. Uh, Deputy Speaker, Johannesburg just elected a mayor with 200 and something members a few days ago. 
The last two and a half months, we have been sitting in Gauteng, which was the epicenter of uh, of Corona. Were we supposed to run away from our province because it's a, it's a runaway? I mean, it's a, it's a epicenter. I don't agree that uh, we should, unless the rules are changed to accommodate uh, a secret ballot through 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 a virtual, which is group voting. We must actually comply with the, with, with the rules. Decentralizing. We are now creating a national assembly into, into a gathering, which is not a gathering. It's not only Joburg. There are several places where pa political parties represented here. There are members who are participating in those elections of mayors. Now, I don't understand this thing saying Western Cape is an epicenter. Therefore, we should not actually even do the hybrid rules, which allow 467 to be in the chamber. We are now shifting to 50 on the basis that... Uh, that that Western Cape is an epicenter. I don't agree. We must amend the rules or we comply with the, with, with what is happening in terms of election of the speaker. The other reasons which com uh, members are giving were said in April, May, June last year, and they were not agreed that we should have 50, this is a gathering. I, I, I really don't agree uh, that, that uh, we should now flout the rules. Let's amend them so that we can have normal voting we've had, which is done by through the chief whips. If that happens, then we don't have the whole uh, drama of having to decentralize and so on. Thanks. Thank you very much. Honorable Sheikh Imam. Thank you, Acting uh, Speaker. One thing I've learned today through the Chief Whoop that when you're naming your child when they're born, don't use Z. Start with A or B. You'll be have an advantage. But uh, Acting Speaker, <laughs> what are the... <laughs> you're going, to, speak, you're going speaker, to need to do a lot of homework on that matter. <laughs> Okay. I think, Speaker, yeah, I, I think what is important is this, that, you know, we're ignoring what the health experts and the scientists are saying. But given the fact that I think what is the concern, remember, first of all, most of the airlines are not flying anymore. And people are expected, particularly to Cape Town, it's a nightmare to get on a flight to go there. But be that as it may, it's going to take place. It must take place. It's the right thing to do. What is important to note is this, that you cannot be in a confined space in large numbers for a long period of time. So if we can work around that, I think we can overcome the problem. That's just my suggestion. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, honorable members, we've covered everyone who wanted to speak, have we? Uh, honorable members, we will uh, go now uh, so that the officials, uh, this is a matter that I think belongs to our uh, assessment of technology and how we can use it for purposes of secret balloting. Uh, we should have anticipated this possibility ourselves, generally speaking, uh, looking at the rules, looking at the possible technology use and so on. Uh, it's for purposes of ongoing adaptation given the changes in our ability to do our work uh, of whether we apply automation here and if so, in what way can we do it? So this is an important uh, matter, even if it doesn't happen uh, in this instance, but it's on the agenda, we must explore possibilities. And uh, that I suspect you will need to have a good conversation with Ndate Mamabulo at the IEC on this matter. I yeah. know that they've been grappling with this issue uh, for exactly the reasons that we are grappling with it and so on. So let's find a way to do that do preparations and secondly the uh, let's uh, 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 we can we can someone is not muted uh, i'm hearing a uh, noise from someone who's not muted uh, okay so so can we then agree that uh, uh, we will go away with an understanding that uh, the provision we will make for members who can be present will be part of the considerations we are making, how we effectively accommodate them and how we do that. So that's an important part of what we need to do. But the preparations as announced appear to be absolutely reasonable. That's the impression I got uh, that members generally were agreeing with the level of uh, uh, preparations that is underway. And if changes can occur, uh, we will be able to do that as soon as we can. Uh, but otherwise, members, let's go with that understanding. And the date is accepted. And this date is consulted on, right? That the castle of the 19th. Uh, 
I can't hear you. I don't have those skills yet. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 The, the date um, in, we will have to communicate it to the office of the Chief Justice. Yes. Um, and only then that we will be able to confirm it and yes. our members. That's yes. number, number two, we need the guidance of this committee. Do we do 10 o'clock or do we do 2 o'clock? I think that's important. In relation to the rules where we could uh, adjust the issue of nominations, those are the rules of the Chief Justice. So we would need to consult with that yeah. office. If the rules committee tomorrow recommends, it can only be a recommendation. Yeah. That nominations be done prior to the sitting. We'll have to communicate with the office of the Chief Justice. Wow. Um, and that will have to be in the rules. If it's not in the rules, we will prepare as if um, there will be secret ballots. Um, and then the issue of virtual voting or voting on the virtual platform our yeah. ICC is continuing to explore that. We just worried that um, I think what my a colleague used the, the word. This is a big stage. Um, we have not tested virtual uh, I mean voting electronically even during normal sittings. Now this is a very important session, and we did not want to take that risk without having tested the system. Yeah. But our ICT is working hard. Um, yeah. on it. I think the, without encouraging members not to attend. But the, the threshold for this process is not that high in terms of attendance. It's important that members attend, but we do accept that uh, there are members who may not be able to attend at all. Yeah. Uh, various factors, including comorbidities. So we accept that issue. Um, mm. That is all I would like to comment on at this point. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, who's that? It's the, it's the Kodaibola speaking, Chairperson. I don't know if you can okay. see go, now, go ahead, Ned. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things have been said now, but I think we can't leave this meeting if we have uncertainty in terms of what's going to happen. Um, Mr. Kaza just now made the point. He said the data has to be cleared with the Chief Justice. Um, what does that mean? Does it mean that we are not going to head on, on the 19th? We need to inform our caucuses. And if we go ahead, obviously, which I think we do, then an, a number of arrangements need to be uh, finalized in the next couple of days. My suggestion would be that we continue as Mr. Papu basically said, uh, parties who would like to get their candidates elected must make sure that they've got a majority in the House. And the rest, if, if there's an individual that feels he or she can't attend, they can't attend, that's fine. But we cannot change the rules at this stage because even if we say now parties must indicate if they're going to nominate, another party may at the, on the day of the event uh, indicate that they want to nominate somebody else. We can't change the rules midstream. I think we should go ahead in terms of the current practice and in terms of the provisions of the Constitution that it needs to be a secret ballot next week, Thursday. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, yes. It's, it's um, I just want to reiterate what Honorable uh, Melda was saying. It's, it, it is going to be very critical for us to affirm with the chief whips of the various parties the numbers that might be coming, primarily because we'll also have to ask to to expand the positions of the nurses and we get our doctor on site uh, with respect to the movement of members. So I think... Um, what Dr. Melder is saying is what I wanted to raise. And on the matter that you raised, uh, the acting speaker, indeed, technology is available on Zoom. However, it was going to be a massive scale if we were to, to try anything. But we will also need to be, it will be indicated by the parties if there's indeed um, members with comorbidities, whom we hope will be a lesser number. And our ICT has indicated it is possible to handle that if it is a lesser number. Thank you, uh, Deputy Acting Speaker. Okay. Okay, Acting Secretary. And uh, Dr. Singh, I see your hand is up. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. Just one uh, final question and consideration. Next week is set aside for oversight committees. And I think that must be taken into account as well with the uh, Honorable Trollic and others. How are those members who are going to be out of Cape Town going to manage, et cetera, et cetera, because it's going to take at least three days, you know, flying in, flying out with a limited flight. So that must be another consideration. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The most um, uh, figural uh, matter for me is the date. 
uh, and this is why I also asked it earlier on, that, um, yeah, we try and pin it down in the next 24 hours or so, if it is possible, there is so there. that uh, members can, yes? I do want to say that, uh, yes, we, that we, we definitely will. Informally, we have been discussing with officials in that office at uh, the date. So certainly we will, because, but we could yes. not have anything until yes. we had met and expressed itself. So we yeah. wish to be able to clarify okay. for end of business today. In fact, within the next no, hour. No, that's, yes, that will be great. Uh, that will be great because uh, I think this will at least uh, put certainty on some key issues and so on. And then, honorable members, uh, all the chief whips, please uh, give us indications of the numbers. It, it helps for planning. Uh, as the acting secretary just explained, it's important that we have a sense uh, as soon as possible so that things happen smoothly next week. Honorable members, uh, this was item seven. It's now been dealt with. Uh, yes. You will update yes. next week on the acting, acting, acting secretary. Uh, what, what I wanted to tell yes, 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 yes. No, we'll do that. There is information we have. Uh, uh, that uh, we will communicate to you as soon as possible. Um, but I also wanted to say to you, please include in your calculation, there's Nollywood in Nigeria, there is Bollywood in India. So take a BRICS approach or an African approach instead of always only the American approach. Uh, have a, uh, thank you very much, honorable members. You will get that feedback. <laughs> Uh, let's go to the next one, which is uh, the, <laughs> the programming. Mayor uh, uh, Doris Lakude. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker. I'll request that, uh, uh, Honorable Acting Speaker, I'll request that I switch off my video for better go ahead, connection. May. Thank you very much. It's, it's um, okay, I'll join you in that, yeah. Okay. Uh, honorable. Uh, Acting speaker, the program is as follows. The, the framework is as uh, presented uh, as it was presented last week. So we can note on the just below the framework the international relations calendar that is there. The first one will be the launch of the CPA branch and the CPA charter on the 20th of August. The second one, the, 60, the 65th uh, Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference, which will take place on the from the 21st of to the 27th of August in Canada. Then the third one, SADC PF webinar on uh, public man, public financial management and the role of the institution of Parliament, which will take place on the 20 on the 24th of August. Um, then the SADC PF Zoom meeting on national engagement on the popularization and domestication of SADC model law on elections on selected countries from the 25th to the 26th of August. Then the SADC PF, a regional dialogue on imaging issues related to the model law on GBV. On GBV. That will be a virtual meeting from the 14th of September. Then, uh, week 14, Monday the 15th of August is Constituency Day, Tuesday the 17th, Committee Days, Wednesday the 18th of August is Committees, uh, at 10 o'clock, it will be the Chief Whips Forum, which is a closed meeting, then uh, after that it will be Committees. Then the Thursday the 19th is the item that we were discussing just now. So we will have programming committee in the morning. Then the, uh, the, 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 the caucuses, then plenary on the election of speaker. This will depend on the time for this item of the election of speaker and the date will depend on the discussions uh, that we just had, whether we start in the morning or in the afternoon. Then Friday, the 20th of August, from 10 o'clock to 17 uh, to 5 o'clock, uh, it will be the Women's Charter for Accelerated Development, uh, setting a 25th year vision and agenda to advance women's equality, growth, and development. 
Then week 15, Monday the 23rd of August is constituency day. Tuesday the 24th of August from 10 o'clock uh, to 1 o'clock. It will be committees. And then we'll have a hybrid, a hybrid a plenary to consider reports on oversight activities on the recent unrest. This will be populated as to which uh, reports we will be dealing with on this day. Then Wednesday, the 25th of August, 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock, it will be committees. Then 10 o'clock to foot forum closed meeting, which will be virtual. Then 15 uh, at 15 hours, we'll have a plenary, which will be hybrid, where a report will be considered oversight reports on activities on the recent unrest. So they will be populated as such. Then um, on the 26th of August, half past eight, it will be the programming committee, which will be virtual. 10 to 1 o'clock, it will be parties caucuses. Then we'll have a plenary at 2 o'clock, members' uh, statements, followed by legislation, which is still provisional. Then the third item will be consideration of the report on PC on higher education, science and technology on oversight visit to National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Then we will also have consideration of the report of the JT Committee on the financial management uh, of uh, management of Parliament on Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. Uh, then we will have the consideration of the report of PC on small business uh, development on COVID-19 debt relief fund beneficiaries uh, virtual uh, oversight. The next uh, order will be the consideration of the report of the PC on international relations and cooperation on the first and second quarters 2020-21 expenditure performance of the Department of International Relations and Cooperation on an African Renaissance and International Cooperation Fund. Then it will be followed, after that, will be followed by motion without notice and notices of motion. Friday, the 27th of August, from 9 to 11, it will be PGIR meeting, followed by a women's parliament. Week 16. Monday, the 30th of August, it will be Constituency Day. Tuesday, the 31st of August, from 10 to 1 o'clock, it will be committees. From 2 o'clock, a hybrid plenary, member statements, legislation, which is still provisional, committee reports and motions. The committee reports and legislations will be populated as, uh, as, as time goes on. And then item number four on that day, on the order, on the order paper, it will be motions without notice and notices of motions. Then the 1st of September, Wednesday, from 9 to 1 o'clock, it will be committees. From 10 o'clock, a Chief Woods Forum meeting, which is a closed, which will be a closed virtual meeting. From 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, it will be plenary hybrid. Questions for oral reply, cluster four, economics. Then Thursday, the 2nd of September, from half past eight to, from half past eight, it will be programming committee, which will be virtual. 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, it will be a multi-party women's caucus. From 2 o'clock, it will be a plenary. Legislations and committee reports will be populated as time goes on. Then Friday, uh, the 3rd of September, from 10 to half past 12, we'll have a, a plenary, which will be hybrid, questions to the president. So, uh, week 17, Monday, uh, Monday, the 6th of September, Constituency Day, Tuesday, the 7th of September, from 10 to one o'clock, it will be committees, then from two o'clock, plenary hybrid, member statements, legislations, uh, committee reports will be populated as such, and motions without notice and notices of motions. Then Wednesday, the 8th of September, 10 o'clock, it will be Chief Whips Forum, which is a closed meeting, virtual, 
and nine uh, from nine o'clock to one o'clock it will be committees as usual then 15 hours to 18 hours we'll have plenary which will be hybrid questions for oral reply at uh, last five economics Thursday, the 9th of September, from half past eight, we'll have a programming committee, which will be virtual, 10 o'clock, plenary, which will be hybrid. We'll be dealing with condolences for the following uh, members who passed on. Ms. Uh, TMA Tongwane, Mr. C. Mackenzie, Ms. B. Maluleka, Ms. Mr. L. M. Jaisa, and Mr. M. N. Malo. May their soul rest in peace. Then Friday, the 10th of September, it will be committees. Week 18, Monday, the 13th of September, is Constituency Day. Tuesday, the 14th of September, from 10 to 1 o'clock, it will be committees. From uh, 2 o'clock to quarter to 5, it will be questions to the Deputy President. Wednesday, the 15th of September, 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock, to one o'clock, it will be committees, 10 o'clock, to FIPS forum, close meeting uh, virtual. Then uh, from three o'clock to six, o to six o'clock, it will be plenary hybrid, questions for oral reply, cluster one, peace and stability, and uh, peace and security. Then Thursday, the 16th of September, half past eight, programming committee, which will be virtual, 10 to one, it will be co uh, party caucuses, from two o'clock, plenary hybrid legislations and committee reports, they will be populated as uh, time goes on. Then Friday, the 17th of September, it will be um, committees. Week 19, Monday, the 20th of September is constituency day. Tuesday, the 21st of September from 10 to one o'clock, it will be committees from two o'clock plenary hybrid, member statements, legislations, committee reports. Uh, legislations, committee reports will be populated uh, as time goes on. Then motions without notice and notices of motion. Wednesday, the 22nd of September, 10, uh, from 9 to 1 o'clock, it will be committees. 10 o'clock, uh, Chief Whips Forum, which is a closed meeting virtual then from 15 hours to 18 hours it will be plenary questions for oral reply cluster to social services thursday the 20th the 23rd of september from half past eight it will be programming committee which is virtual 10 o'clock to one o'clock uh, party caucuses then from uh, 14 hours plenary hybrid committee reports which will be populated and also a debate on Heritage Day. Friday, the 24th of September, is a public holiday, Heritage Day. Then uh, the week 20, on the 27th of September, which, which will be Monday, Constituency Day. Tuesday, the 28th, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, committees from 2 o'clock, uh, member statements, legislations, uh, committee reports, they will be populated as such. Uh, four, it will be motions without notice and notices of motion. Wednesday, the 29th of September, from 10 o'clock, uh, from 9 o'clock, it's uh, 9 to 1 is committees. Then 10 o'clock, uh, Chief Whips Forum, which is a closed meeting and virtual. Then from 15, 15 hours to 18 hours, it will be plenary. Questions for oral reply, cluster three governance. Then Thursday, the 30th of September, from uh, half past eight, programming committee, which is virtual. Then 10 o'clock to one o'clock, multi-party women's caucus. Then at 14 hours, we'll have a mini plenary sessions, which will be virtual. For now, it's still provisional. And then Friday, the 1st of October, will be a committees. Honorable Deputy Speaker, uh, Honorable Acting Speaker, thank you very much. If Mr. Tasso will have anything to add, you can thank you very much, Honorable uh, Acting Speaker. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, let's hear. Honorable Kasso, do you have anything to add? 
uh, I, I have nothing to add at this stage. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Okay. Honorable Singh, you seem to be raring to go. Please <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Honourable uh, Deputy Speaker, and thank you for the presentation. We're looking forward to a, a programming whip uh, to be appointed soon, so we don't uh, overburden the uh, Deputy Chief Whip. Uh, I'd just like to know uh, this woman's charter, which was listed on the 20th of August. Uh, what yes. is it? Is it a sitting? Is it just a charter? Is it who's involved in it? Uh, that's one. And okay. second, Secondly, I heard Honourable Frolic saying earlier on that uh, some of the committee's terms of reference, etc., are being worked on with regard to their oversight visits. Now, which reports will we be receiving from the 24th August onwards? Uh, will it just be random reports as and when available of, for example, if the Basic Education Committee went out or any other committee, will it be those reports? Because it would seem that the Police Committee report they would not have even started perhaps that week with, uh, uh, you know, with the work. Thank you. Thank you. Any comment on the uh, Honourable Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I have my hand up. Okay. All right, yeah. you'll follow. Yes. Yeah. Then. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Uh, we welcome the, the, pro, uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the report on the programme. Yeah, <laughs> the program of uh, Parliament that was presented by the Deputy Chief Whip. Uh, I just want to, I'm covered with on one item that is raised by Honorable uh, Chief Whip of the IFP regards to the updates or on the reports of unrest. So if uh, I, we can be updated in that regard. But I have noticed, uh, Acting Speaker, that on the program there is no women's debate. It's only women's parliament. Uh, I just want to get a clarity because I feel that we must have a women's debate as we usually have and women issues are very important and it all it it's also affects all of us uh, as a yeah. country. So I think we should have one, uh, Deputy Speaker. Maybe we can Great. be clarified on that one. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Um, and that uh, hope? I wanted to bring it to the attention of the, of the programming committee that uh, on the 31st, 1st and 2nd, there is a cabinet lecota which is supposed to be attended by ministers and deputy ministers. Uh, and that's going to affect some of the items, order, orders on those days. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can reorganize it to shift some of those items or replace them with committees. And then uh, on days of com or particular committees, then move those items. Because motion, uh, member statements, uh, there's a cluster which is supposed to have uh, responses. We don't want to have a situation where uh, ministers and deputy ministers are not are, are not there, and then uh, it, it creates problems for the for programming. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, who else would like to uh, speak? That's an important thing. Who Who is that? So I would only like to respond to the issue of the charter. Yes, go ahead, Nadi. Yes, the, my information, uh, Deputy Speaker, is that the session of acting speaker, my hand is up. Oh, okay. You want to speak before Nadi Kaso speaks? Go ahead. Hey, Nadi, Kyalebo. Nadi Singh, if you or Honourable Singh, if you have spoken, lower your hand unless you want to speak again. That's fine. Thank you very much, uh, uh, acting, deputy, acting speaker. <laughs> so I volunteer to be acting deputy speaker. <laughs> <laughs> There's no vacancy there. <laughs> yes, vacancy on the speaker. <laughs> and the member of Kalipi, which I support fully, um, I, I, I want to propose family whilst uh, uh, the matter can be referred back to the programming committee, that uh, we utilize um, the date of the 31st of August for the Women's uh, Month debate uh, because uh, of exactly what Comrade uh, Honorable Hope have just said about the cabinet holder so, so that we can close the month and it is going to give us uh, more time. It will be after the, the women's parliament. Some of the issues that would have been raised there in the women's parliament, you might be able to take them up during the women's debate on the 31st. 
um, chair on um, what Mr. Tasso is going to respond, but um, on the NA program, we don't have women's charter as a related development. Uh, that has been the NCOP program, unless I've been, my parliamentary program is wrong. I don't have that. It is on the, uh, on, on, on the uh, NCOP. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, talking that day, Kaso, I'll, I'll speak afterwards here. Yes, um, the information that I have says that uh, the session of the 20th of August would be um, where the review findings um, will be announced and a revised charter would be launched. It's set to be a session from 10 o'clock to um, 300 hours. And um, we indeed we got the request to include it from the office of the of the deputy speaker. Thank you. Okay, uh, honourable members, uh, uh, there are proposals for changes that should occur as a result of the as a result of the. Uh, problems identified by Honorable Papo. Um, and then, of course, the question of what we do with those dates, the proposals has been made. Uh, Honorable members, um, if perhaps it may make a better, uh, so that we, we feel a lot more comfortable, I do recommend that we, we, we the, the review of the charter and its outcomes, perhaps we we discuss it after this. I will discuss it with the chief whip after this meeting, so that we. Do. I participated in the majority of those review programs, and uh, some members uh, also chaired some of these meetings uh, from the assembly. The women, the chairperson of the women's caucus, multi-party caucus, but and others. And so it would be useful to provide, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, additional briefings and a platform for discussing uh, the outcome of that process. So what we'll do, uh, the, uh, the, the dates are proposed. And so we, uh, the draft of the outcome of the process is now available. And so we would like to have that discussed and then we can finalize perhaps the most appropriate way to handle it. So let me suggest that so that we smooth the process of handling uh, these matters as proposed, uh, including by the class with the explanation that he, he makes. Uh, honorable members, is there any other comment on the program? If there isn't any, okay. Let's uh, uh, then proceed. Uh, uh, Chief Whips, does any one of you have an earth-shattering uh, announcement that we should take on board? Uh, yeah, Ndate Papo is one, Honorable Mulder is the next. Uh, uh, how come you don't have one, uh, 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 Majotina? Uh, you can't drop balls everywhere. Uh, let's hear you, Ndate uh, Papo. I just wanted to check on those three days, what is the decision of the NAPC? Uh, will, will, will the days be swapped with other programs? There is a proposal made by the chief whip of the majority party. And uh, I would imagine that other members might jump in there to make proposals that can be finalized next year. Uh, that uh, Mulder? Thank you, Deputy uh, Acting Speaker. I was just wondering, given the changed circumstances, if we are going to continue with this meetings on the Teams platform or are we going to consider the other platform? I was just wondering. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand that question. Uh, if you may explain, uh, Dr. Mulder. Uh, what's the problem with the Teams and what's the problem with Zoom? No, there's no problem. I am not mm. sure, but I think the programming committee is the only yeah. committee that uses the Teams program. I think most of the others are all on Zoom. Yes, and okay. The reasons why we have used Teams in the past, and I think circumstances may have changed. So I was just wondering, <laughs> no problem with Teams, if we're going to continue with Teams, or maybe consider perhaps uh, Zoom, or maybe we should leave that to the new incumbent as speaker. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, we we will we will uh, 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 create an opportunity for this to be discussed. Yeah. That it, Kaso, you were saying something. So I think I think the one issue uh, um, about the proposals or the points raised by Honorable Papo will mm. be the impact of that arrangement on the on questions. I think cluster four uh, that Wednesday. Um, because yes. if, if we move that session, it will have a knock-on effect on the rest yeah. of the program. So we have we'll have to work on, around that and see if we can have a, a, a proposal to make at the next NAPC next week. Yeah, I, I I thought so too. That I think the the actual ripple effect must be assessed carefully, uh, including what we can replace some of those time slot with. So let's mm -hmm. shall we go with that, honourable members? Okay. No, thank you very much. That's it. Honorable members, in the absence of any earth shattering announcements, uh, the acting proceeds until further notice. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you.